Uh, episode 38. Welcome. Welcome. He's Chris. He's Aaron. Hey, you got it right this time. Yeah, I know, I got it. Yeah, so we're on episode 38 already. Holy mackinac. That's a long time. That's a lot of episodes. So we got uh, some UDR stuff. Chris uh, cut the body and sectioned it up. We got a, a new paint job for him. Yeah. That we got to show you. You mean this isn't the new body? I hope not. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> There's not much left. Um, but yeah, we got to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, some of the questions that we got. Mm hmm from episode 37 uh, to win some of those puzzles. And then we're also gonna talk about the advantages of picking up a better radio than what comes with your RTR or kit. Mm. So yeah. we're gonna talk about that too. So it's gonna be kind of a long episode, so let's get right into it. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see, this is not the new body. So let's just take this old, old BD off of here. Um, I'm amazed you can even get it on. Yeah, I know. It's, like, it's pretty up. beat. Why don't you help me out there? Yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> So I got the truck pretty much all fully rebuilt, ready to go. It still needs a few little bits and pieces. But I got the body all painted up. Now, if you guys remember my buggy body, the design on it. The iron buggy. The let's, iron let's, buggy. Let's get that right, iron buggy. Went with the same old design this time. You need some more decals on there, dude. I know. I need the uh, local RC shop to give me some decals. I did give me some decals. I need more decals. Oh, dude, you missed. Did I miss it? Yeah. This is just painful. Yeah, there it is. Um, so, got myself a new body. I actually reinforced the whole inside of the body. Oh, uh, you should have showed them that. I know, Before, right? But, uh, I know. Let's take, take the body off. off again. Careful, oh, don't wreck it. Either. I scratched it. So I used two tubes of shoe goo on the inside of this body along with some drywall tape. So all the way along the inside, the roof, all the little pillars, I reinforced all the points in the body where it's gonna find stress and end up breaking. So what's the, what's the, the kind of overall consensus on how to shoe goo that? You wanna talk about that? It was tricky. So uh, no, you messaged me a couple my times. My first time ever like shoe gooing a body. So it was definitely a, a learning experience. Uh, I found I put on like a little light coat, smear it, I got like a little paint smear, and then lay down my fiberglass tape, and then I put a little bit more on, smear it a little bit more so it evens out, I'll let it dry for a little bit, then I usually did two coats. So the best part about Shugu is it stays flexible like a silicone, yeah. uh, but it's really, really strong, and that's why you kind of put a layer down first. Um, just so that it sticks to the body. Yeah, it sticks it to the body the and it gives good adhesion to the tape. Even though you can get adhesive uh, mesh tape, the biggest thing that you want to do is always just give it a for sure layer it's going to stick to. Mm. Uh, and then when you put that extra layer of shoe goo on top of it, uh, it's going to make it so that flex uh, in the tape doesn't just fall off uh, and it's going to adhere to itself since it's shoe goo on shoe goo. But you got to make sure you do it before the first layer of shoe goo dries because yeah. um, then it's just going to form as one big layer That's of shoe goo. That's the key is getting it all done in time and yeah. in a timely process because so, shoe goo dries pretty quick. So the best part is kind of do one layer at a time. So say you're going to do the nose, do the nose. And then once that's done, then kind of work your way section exactly, by section. Because yeah. if you try to do the whole thing and then come back and work on it, not gonna work. Not gonna work. Um, so yeah, that's a good tip to, yeah. to shoe goo the body for some extra strength, some extra durability. And it's gonna kind of, if you put it on high wear points, like say the fenders, uh, the quarters, stuff like that, when the tire comes up and hits it, it's gonna rub through the shoe goo, the layers and the tape before it's exactly. actually wears through your paint. So. Yeah, and last time I used to use like the Yeah Racing just fiberglass tape, which also works pretty good. Uh, but you have to make sure you get the body really clean, otherwise it doesn't stick, and then you get dirt behind it. So I think the shoe goo and tape was definitely a better way to go. Yeah, as long as it's the same thing, the body yeah, has to be clean. The same so idea, yeah. the best thing to do is before you even put it on the truck, do it then. Then everything's yeah. clean, everything's yeah. fresh. And that shoe goo's gonna stick, just make sure that paint is fully cured before you do it, so. Now Aaron just needs to get his UDR fixed so we can have a little race. Yeah, I just need the front diff, but I also got some parts since yours is kind of decked out with some extra stuff. Mine has to be decked out with some extra stuff. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. I'm excited, so hopefully we get some more snow soon. Yeah, I and was then, gonna go and drive it today, but it was all melty and stuff, so. It's not very nice, not so very nice. Uh, it's gonna be fun to rip them in the snow again. I think last year, we, I had a blast last year. Yeah, and I've driven this, I've put about five or six packs through now, and it's just been a blast. I also cut the tires. So the tires, I cut out every third tread block, so the tires will dig a little bit more in the snow and everything now too, in theory. In theory. 
<laughs> that works. Okay, so we're gonna pick a couple winners for some puzzles. We had four to give away, um, and we have a whole bunch of questions to pick from. So um, if you wanna read the first question, or I can read it, you can yeah. answer it, it doesn't really matter. How come radios with tiny or no antennas are better than ones that are three plus feet long? So the best part now I is- I think he's referring like to the old- Yeah, like old 27 AM, or 75 yeah. megahertz yeah. stuff. Yeah, so the nice part is now new radios are on a higher frequency, 2.4 yeah. gigs. Um, so it's a more powerful frequency than the old 75 or 27 megahertz that usually have the long metal whip antenna. You, you know, he can play sword fighting and poke a friend in the eye and it just went badly. And that, that was a reference to you one eye. You know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, it's funny, sorry, too soon. Inside joke. But yeah, the new radios just have a higher frequency. So the same frequency that a house phone would actually run on. So you get a, a quite a bit farther frequency and distance on the range in comparison to the 27 mm -hmm. megahertz uh, and 75 megahertz. And another advantage to that as well is uh, with a 2.4 gigahertz radio, um, usually the antenna on the receiver is a lot shorter too. Yeah. If uh, if at all any, it was like I know the new Futaba yeah, there's lots of Futabas and stuff. That no antenna. Even yeah. some of the um, tactics. Yeah, they no had no antenna, antenna as yeah. well. So that's kind of the best part with the uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Mm. So huge advantage. No more eight double A's either. No they more rotating wires everywhere. Yeah, they only have four double A's on some of the new radios. Um, so that's kind of a huge advantage as well. So then question number two is what is the coldest temperature that you can safely operate a lipo powered rc without worrying about damaging the battery so that's a that's a good one yeah um, the the biggest thing with operating a lipo battery in colder temperatures is you will just get a lesser runtime so the, the biggest thing is not letting your battery freeze so if you are going to be out like say on a trail run like you guys mm -hmm. do you don't want to leave them sit like in the backpack or just sit somewhere that isn't warm. Keep them in your jacket pocket in the winter just so they stay warm. Yeah. So we always used to do. Yeah, you definitely get a lot less runtime in anything in like minus five to minus 10. You'll definitely see a significant drop in runtime. Um, the biggest thing also is the parts become a little bit more brittle oh, yeah. Um, yeah. in the winter. So you'll definitely notice the parts breaking. Yeah, it was a few years ago we went out trailing. It was like minus 30, minus 35. And I think the batteries, like a 5,000 mAh 2 cell, only lasted like 20 minutes. In something that should last like an hour. In something hour that lasts an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. So it's not that it's hard on the batteries, other than it's going to drop capacity. But the biggest thing is after you are done running in a condition like that, throw them in storage as soon as possible yeah, when they get that run. voltage back up. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want that battery sitting uh, in a dead state in the cold weather because it will drain and you will have issues with voltage when you do plug exactly. it in to the charger the next time. Uh, and you might get a cell voltage error or a low voltage error or something like that mm -hmm. on the charger. So that's definitely something you really want to be careful on. And I think that's the biggest thing that goes along with running batteries in cold weather. Um, it just, just yeah, exactly. When, especially when you go to charge them. So that's a good question. And then the next question is actually from a follower we've had from California. So this uh, this person oh, joiner. Nope. No. Nope. He's from Louisiana. Oh, sorry. He's from Louisiana. Um, but uh, this one is from all from California. Let's see if it loads here. So the question is. Would you rather use 2S, but only last a minute, or a 3S, but they can catch fire every time you use it? 2Cell? Yeah, I think like the biggest thing is it's what you're a fan of and, and what you're kind of doing with the car. Like, mm. I've always been a big fan of 2Cell, especially in racing. It's, it's more than enough usable power for us. Mm -hmm. um, where the 3Cell, if, if you're bashing, Dues in your drift cars, stuff like that outside. I always used to use three cell. Yeah. I never used to touch two cell battery. Yeah, like the biggest thing is with the two cells, you definitely won't break as much parts. Exactly. <laughs> the three cell, you'll definitely break but all the parts. It's not that pure raw power, you know? Power. Give me the power. But yeah, uh, definitely you'll get a lot more play time out of the two cell. But yeah. uh, I don't know. Three cells lighting on fire doesn't seem doesn't good. Sound so like fun to I think we're going to take, like, I think this is this is like me saying it's for you too. Yeah. But I think two the group. Cell. The group choice here is two cell, not three cell. Fires are not good. I don't know if you watched, probably watched that uh, episode with the lipo fires. That's bad. Now, you definitely don't want that if you have a plastic chassis or anything plastic in the car. Definitely melting down. You're gonna melt the body. Just not something you want to play with. 
and it's super dangerous. So definitely two cell with mm-hmm. only a minute runtime. So those are a couple questions we'll take for this week, and then we'll do another couple for next week, and then give away all these puzzles. Exciting. Yeah. So thank you everyone for commenting. Um, and yeah, we'll just uh, contact the winners. And then we'll get uh, information if you aren't from Saskatoon Mm -hmm. here uh, and get you those puzzles sent out. So thank you again for commenting. That was awesome. There weren't two puzzling. What he said. (laughs) So bad. So bad. Okay, so one thing we get lots of questions about. I know I do. I know you do is why would I upgrade from, say, a stock radio, like something like this Traxxas TQI, to any one of the Spectrum radios or Futaba radio or something 2.4 with a screen? So this is a question we get often, so let's not let, let's just talk about it on the yeah. show. Like, like, why not, right? So the Traxxas radio is pretty basic, pretty standard. You know, it's steering, throttle, and then you have a menu and a set button on here, so you can go through um, the settings just with the lights yeah. on the menu set. Um, and then this one is the link enabled. So you do have the option um, to have multiple cars on here um, and you have the option to buy that link and then download the app and do all your settings. For an extra phone. cost. Yeah, this is like 45, 50 bucks yeah. for that link adapter. So the Traxxas radio, I guess, is kind of the tricky one because it's kind of the hybrid between a basic kit RTR radio and a higher end radio. Yeah. yeah, but uh, it's still kind of basic. You still can do your trims and your endpoints and stuff like that, but it's super basic in comparison to one of these radios. So I know these are Chris's radios, so why don't you talk about your spectrums and kind of the things that you like, dislike, uh, and why these radios are better than something like that. The one thing I really like about the spectrum is everything's adjustable on it. You've got sub trims, exponentials, everything's on the LCD screen. It's really easy to access the menus and to make those adjustments where you're not using your phone or playing with the menus on the Traxxas. And also the, the throttle and the brake just feels a lot smoother. The steering feels nicer. So it's just a whole better feeling radio. And uh, being able to run more than one vehicle off the remote is really nice. I've got like eight or nine cars now. So having the two Spectrum remotes, I run everything off Spectrum now. Yeah. So the nice thing is, like Chris is saying, uh, it gives you better feel. And that's actually not just like the radio feels better in your hand. There's actually more pickup points within the potentiometers on the steering and the throttle. So you have less of a dead spot. So say on this Traxxas radio, when you pull the trigger, um, it's going to go from, you know, 10% to 20% throttle, for example. Like it's not going to have a super smooth, uh, a lot of pickups. It's going to feel kind of jerky where the Spectrum and the Futaba radios are gonna have more pickups in their potentiometers. And it's gonna feel a lot smoother because mm-hmm. you are gonna be having more control with less input. So that's the best part. Exactly. And then talk about exponentials as well. So say you kind of feel like the radio is going too fast. Um, on the Spectrums, you can set uh, exponential, which essentially you can make a curve. Um, so make it slower with more input. And the Futaba is kind of a little bit different. You can do your exponentials and your curves, Mm -hmm. but you can also set speed. So you can turn your speed up or down. And one nice thing about the Spectrums as well, you put a Spectrum receiver in your car, uh, and then you can have, say, one radio, and on these DX4s or 5Cs, you can actually have 20 cars on one radio. So all you got to do is buy the receivers, and say you buy an RTR, take that RTR radio, uh, don't toss them in the garbage, you sell it. Sell the radio and receiver together to somebody maybe getting into the hobby, you know, get 20, 30 bucks back maybe and put keep that- Maybe it as a spare. Yeah. In case anything ever happens to your stuff, it's always good to have those spare parts. Yep, that's exactly it. And the one nice thing, like Chris said, you get the screen. So everything is now done off the radio. You don't need to have the phone and the app open all the mm-hmm. time to make sure that, uh, you know, you're setting the right things, you have the right model, everything's gonna be done through the radio itself. Um, so yeah, like you have a lot of different options. Like you definitely don't have to go fancy like the 4PX or 7PX or M17, but there's definitely a lot of Econo radios 
um, that are definitely way better than stock and give you the options to start playing around oh, with yeah. endpoints. So how far it steers left to right. So you build a kit like the EB410, for example. Uh, you put a servo in there, uh, but you don't quite have the linkages set properly and say you need it to turn less left than it does right. You can actually do that individually um, with the endpoints. Mm -hmm. You can also do that with your throttle. You can do that for channel three, like say you have a shift servo in TRX4, something like that. Lights like you have anything, yeah. a lot of different options. Yeah, you can use a servo to power lights on and off. Like there's so many different things you can do with a little bit of a fancier radio that a lot of people say, well, I don't really need that because you know I'm not really going to ever change my truck like i'm just gonna keep say a slash for example but you do definitely get a lot of nice options yeah and going even to even if you don't need all the fed stuff going to a different radio just for the control and the feel the feel is something i'd say would be worth it yeah and the range like you'll oh, get a yeah. lot in more increased range on the 2.4 radios say from spectrum or futaba anything like that in comparison to some of the Transis mm -hmm. radios or hpi oh, yeah. radios we've had in the past um so if you have a bigger truck like say the udr you could take one of these radios and be able to drive it farther away from you like we're already talking about three it's quarter of a mile range mm -hmm. but now that range is actually going to be increased further, yeah. by a higher end radio and as well as the speed the resolution speed is quite a bit faster so it's going to actually talk to the receiver and the radio with lesser latency mm -hmm. in comparison to the stock radio so you know things are going to happen faster because the receiver your steering is going to react faster. quicker your throttle is going to react quicker yeah. everything's going to just be a little more peppy as well something other that's really cool about spectrum futaba doesn't do this but spectrum does they have relia code on the receivers yeah so they're they kind of have an extra built-in water resistance to them I've i'm not going to call them waterproof because they're definitely not waterproof uh but say you have a traxxas box the seal breaks and you don't notice it and you get a little bit of moisture in that receiver you're not going to go through it's a receiver okay, yeah. yeah so that's kind of a cool thing especially about boats uh, you don't have to worry about putting them in a waterproof container in a boat mm -hmm. too so it's kind of a nice thing with spectrum the only thing that they don't do quite as of yet is fully antennaless yeah. receivers. There was talks with them coming out where the Futaba, the Airtronics, and, and some other remotes actually have no antenna on the receiver itself. So there's no wire at all, which is quite nice Wait, if you have an electric yeah. truck. Yeah. Um, definitely not recommended for the nitros on the Futabas, but um, that's kind of a whole different uh, argument. So that's kind of our uh, the reasoning why maybe a better radio might not be a bad idea, uh, as well as if you don't know, use a breaker radio definitely some more options out there oh, yeah. uh, but if you have any questions on any of the radios we talked about or, or kind of what you should get into you know post a comment down below yeah. but yeah thank you for watching this is episode 38, 38 of the ultra rc hobby show don't forget to like comment and subscribe don't forget to share with all your friends on facebook so they can see the awesome action don't forget to check us out on snapchat ultra rc hobbies don't forget to hit us up on instagram Oh, and Mason, I've got the fancy sticker coming for the UDR. Don't you worry. <laughs> so there we go. Like I said before, we have all the winners. Uh, we'll be contacting you, and we'll have your prizes either here at the store for pickup uh, or, you know, for the example of the California, our buddy down there, uh, we'll be contacting you, and we'll ship them out, and we'll, we'll give you a, a couple extra goodies, uh, let's say. You mean we're not going on a road trip? It'd be cool. But I don't know if I can view, like, a 20-hour road trip with him. Oh, yeah, me neither. <laughs> no, with yourself or me? No, with myself. Okay, I can see it. Okay, but anyway, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Thank you for the support. Yes, 38 episodes strong. And uh, I don't think we're planning on stopping anytime soon. So that's bonus. And the phone's ringing. It's a sign. We're, we're it's closed. a sign. <laughs> Bye.